Hello, welcome back to BS Live. In this episode, I want to show you the whole process of making a simple basic fluid simulations that you can use in a stop motion. Um, I will be using AR, but I have an uh, online friend artist here, Pinot. Uh, he made a lot of animations, interesting stop motion animations, and he just posted something about uh, stop motion liquid that was actually made using side effects Houdini. So I'll try to recreate something like this using Blender, just the basic one. There is no, um, I will probably not make it, making it like something like this, but you can easily make something like this as well. But so yeah, I'll, I never actually used 2.82 fluid uh, simulations, but I have used flip fluid add-on in the past and I believe that they are kind of similar. So let's get started. I'm gonna delete the camera and the lamp. So I'll leave this cube. I know that by default this cube is two meters by two meters by two meters in volume. And this can be our starter from uh, for uh, fluid simulations. So save as fluid pinot. And oh yeah, I'm using 2.8 to alpha, so it's still alpha. But we all we have fluid simulations in this version of Blender. Um, so with this guy, we can start to work on the fluid. This guy is gonna be our fluid domain. So select the objects and go to this physics properties and select fluid. So by default, fluid and you get type of none. And you're gonna switch it either to domain, flow, or effector. Domain being where the fluid's gonna uh, exist. So we're gonna turn this box into a domain. So we can see some kind of volume. And we can also see the size of the fluid voxel. Okay. And we actually have, apparently, we have a couple of different types. We have gas and fluid, uh, liquid. So I'll switch this to liquid. And suddenly we have this box once again, but there's also this option that's almost, almost hidden. You're gonna turn on. You're gonna have to turn on liquid. So that's really important. So now this box is become invisible again. So save. Normally the, the easiest fluid simulations is if you create another objects. You can use donut. I'm just gonna be using icosphere. And then you you have some kind of objects and you turn it into fluid uh, by selecting the objects you go back to the physics tabs hit fluid now this uh, we want this as a flow okay so that's the second one and the flow type is gonna be liquid flow behavior now this is uh, important inflow outflow or geometry we by default it's set to geometry by setting it to geometry it's gonna just turn into liquid and fell fall down into the box uh, if you set it as inflow it's gonna generate fluid particles um, for every frames until you stop it if you have outflow this is kind of like the something that sucks the particles out for now just leave it as geometry as basic as it is um, there's a initial velocity we don't need to worry about that so the num so this actually will work right away and we have this border collisions of the fluid front left back top right and bottom is turned on by default the fluids um, sampling <clears throat> by default is actually quite already quite high in terms of resolutions so let's just try baking it by default it's also set to 50 frames only but that's uh that's okay we're gonna just leave it at 50 frames so select the domain fluid and we're gonna bake the simulations so what i realized right away is that compared to the old blender fluid and compared to flip animations we cannot we cannot scrub while it's simulating so while it's doing it you maybe you go to the toilet or buy coffee and come back this one is only 50 frames and simple basic fluid um, for what 
Pinot is actually doing uh, with the cheese simulations cheese fluid it's a he actually start with I think there is also already a fluid inside the box in these shapes and then there's some kind of invisible object fell down so we have this drip so we can do that later but you can see flip um, fluid simulations can take a while to process um, you need a powerful computer I'm using MacBook Pro and I'm currently recording as well so it's gonna take a bit of time so I will try to do this uh, but if you want to do this like I said uh, you need already to have some kind of fluid inside this box so you create another box and turn it into fluid and then you drop an object that's function as a effector or some kind of obstacle so that's something I will show later but for now let's see how long we have to wait until we have some results so this is only 50 frames and 50 frames is usually too short for any kind of fluid simulations but for his stop motion he actually only have 13 13 frames and it's just a sim simple drip a drop like a like a raindrop on the cheese that's interesting 98% okay we are done so we can see we can scrub now and we can see the fluid okay that's quite large uh, okay that's yeah quite large goes in and splat um, so by at this point you don't see any mesh yet but you can now have to turn on the mesh and then bake the mesh So once you have the mesh, you can you, you, you have two things. You have a couple of things, uh, like you can export it as Alembic or export it as a sequence of OBJ. If you want to make it into stop motion, you want to print it out. But usually the time, besides the time you spend for processing the simulations, you also need time to actually kind of tweak the attributes of the flip fluid itself whether it's like particle radius or kind of settings that make the liquid kind of thick or like uh, water-like there are so many properties that you need to set up and then you need to re-simulate that kind of things takes a lot of times you can per a week working on fluid it's like um, can be quite tedious but the result can be interesting the thing about fluid simulation is that it's uh, it's artistic and technical at the same time but it's also very 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 time consuming okay now you can see the li liquid and the, the mesh it's generated we can turn off the liquid you can see only the mesh okay we can hide the original icosphere so this fluid is actually quite large it's two meters by two meters and it's really kind of filling up the box still behaving it's behaving too wildly if you want just like a, a drip you don't have like a one meter of water and drop it so it's physically kind of physically correct to me two meters of water is quite large but so this is the result you get you can actually save this as alembic so save so normally I like to export as Alembic. Alembic is really cool. Uh, it's really saving it into a single object and you can import it and it's gonna run very, very fast. So I have um, something that I baked earlier. So after you export as Alembic, um, you can import it back. So I have something over here that's a little bit more like a drip. So you can see this is icosphere and I only <clears throat> put the icosphere kind of on the top of the the fluid bounding uh, domain. So if I delete this guy, so we have just fluid on top hanging there like that. And it drops for yeah 50 frames. So this is Alembic and it's running really fast. And this is real time. I mean you can now 
just give you the material on etc but i want to show you another trick where you if you are using um, obj sequence you can import multiple obj so this import multiple obj is not something that comes in blender by default blender has import obj but it's only for a single obj you can write python script that does it for you but uh, i recommend you this import multiple obj for blender 2.8 x by Netflix. this um, you just download the py the python and then import it as add-on once you have it you're gonna have this file import multiple obj so you definitely gonna need this if you are stop motion animators and i already have this obj so whatever you sort here whether whether you sort it by date or sort it by name it's gonna matter when you select this select all and then import it into blender so keep that in mind we're gonna import it as sequence and we're gonna animate the visibility um, in term of animating as AR visibility actually doesn't work you need to probably animate the scale or animate the position so this is all the objects 50 frames of animations of a liquid drip file save as imported liquid demo all right now we want to animate the visibility on and off you can do that from here um, so showing viewport so this thing uh, there is another way if you want to this to be automated you can animate it one by one and offset it or you can use something like I will be using stretch of notes let me do this oh, there is a bug in blender 2.8 alpha so I cannot tap down arrow but yeah. I'm gonna show you this this node in special right this this will select every object in the scene you can filter it, filter it out um, if you have other objects so you can filter by name if you like in this case we have we only have the the fluid and you can use the object id set to set the visibility on and off what is the properties for visibility if you don't know you just hover hover on any attributes and then command option shift c i think that's the key the hot key and then paste so this one is actually hide hide on the hide the viewport and then you can use a number integer zero and one will either hide or reveal so it's like animating the visibility on and off so if you want to do this kind of procedurally uh, think of it the logic is like this the frame is changing and you want the frame to drive the visibility of the object so the logic is if you have a frame and then you compare it with the uh, with a number the number i'm gonna make like a number range the number range will be um one and between one and fifty so start at frame one step until 50 so we're gonna compare and the result if it's if it's equal if the frame number is equal the objects or the number give it a either true or false so that's uh hopefully works So you can see there is one object that's actually disappearing and we're gonna invert this using not okay there we go so 
if the frame number equals a number here this is a number from 1 to all the way to 50 right if it's equal the frame number is gonna give a value that's either true or false you can see there you go there's a true true means visible false means invisible so that's the whole setup and then you can simply keyframe the animations and then export it as glb gltf for usdz stuff you at this moment um in theory it should work but i try this it doesn't work so you need to there's a there's a some kind of trick that enable this to work for usdz for for apple ar otherwise it's not gonna work but as glb this actually should work and you just need to keyframe you just need to keyframe the the animations but you have it right there so that's a that's a way to quickly create a liquid or fluid simulations using blender and turn it into stop motion animations that you can print out just like uh what pinot pinot each one dirty is working here uh i think currently he he's a, an animator somewhere and i think he he's in new york and he made a lot of interesting stop motion animations take a look at his works highly recommend it very inspiring so thanks Pinot for the idea and here's how you do it using Blender. Alright, thanks again for tuning in and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.